the years. And of course, in October, we worked with partners in the UN uh, to agree the new resolution on Sri Lanka, which has been mentioned uh, many times today, Resolution 511, to extend the mandate to report on the realities on the ground and to preserve and protect evidence of past human rights violations and abuses uh, for future accountability processes. So, this international framework ensures that Sri Lanka remains on the international human rights agenda, and we believe this diplomatic approach is the best way to encourage progress. However, we do recognise that sincere and sustainable progress on human rights and accountability must be led by the people of Sri Lanka. Um, over the last three years, we have spent more than £10 million from our Conflict, Stability and Security Fund to support peace building, social cohesion and gender equality, as well as to strengthen uh, democratic institutions. And Lord Ahmed of Wimbledon met Sri Lankan Foreign Minister Ali Sabri in September to urge progress and to renew our offer to work with, um, with, with Sri Lanka. Now, a number of um, uh, honourable and right honourable members have mentioned sanctions today. Of course, uh, the government would not uh, speculate from the dispatch box on possible uh, designations because, of course, that would reduce their impact. But um, we, uh, we keep all evidence and potential listings under close review. Uh, to conclude, Madam Deputy Speaker, the people of Sri